What's up everyone, Willy Apple here, and today Apple has released the final release of macOS Sequoia to everyone, and in this video I'll be showing you every single feature that is new inside the software. We got a lot to talk about, let's get started. Alright, so the first one is that we have window snapping, so simply by doing this, you can snap a window to the left, and you can also snap multiple windows, so if I wanted to snap this window up here to the corner, you could do that just fine. And also if you hover right here, you could snap a window to the corner, so it does that. Extremely nice to see that we have finally have proper window snapping in macOS Sequoia. And additionally, if you were to just do fill and arrange, you actually have a little line right here so you can easily resize both of the windows with ease, which is extremely nice to see inside of native macOS. You also have keyboard shortcuts when wanting to move and resize windows. So if you press Control, globe, and then right or left, you can get the proper ones that you want. So here's me doing that right now. And adding on the shift key, you can actually resize both of two windows that you have selected at the same time. But it works extremely well here inside of macOS Sequoia. Now our next feature has to do with your iPhone. So you have an iPhone connected to iOS 18. You're actually able to use your iPhone directly on your Mac. So here it is right here. Here's my iPhone. And if I want to make it larger, I can make it larger by pressing Command Plus. And even smaller by pressing Command Minus, which is extremely nice to see. And I can essentially just use anything I want on my iPhone, and I can even use third-party mice as well, which is extremely nice to see. This feature works really well if you want to use your iPhone in school, but your teachers don't like it, but you can use your MacBooks, for example. This is a great feature to get around that. I do not promote that. I'm just saying you can do that. And along with this feature, you have iPhone notifications here on your MacBook. So it's really nice to see that we finally have iPhone notifications. I've been wanting this for so long. And macOS will actually be smart about it. So if you have the app on your MacBook, for example, Discord or something, it will actually not show up right here. It will just show the Mac notification for Discord. And that's it. Now, the next feature has to do with Safari because we got a couple of changes here inside of Safari. First of all, they kind of redesigned this a little bit. It looks a lot more modern. And along with that, if you go to a website with a bunch of ads and they get in your way a lot, you could actually click this button right here and you can actually hide distracting items. So if I wanted to get rid of this ad, I could easily just do that. You can also click that and we'll remove that content as well, which is extremely nice to see. And along with that, there's actually a summary feature in Saw Safari. So we'll try summarizing the entire web page for you. And it's also a lot easier to get to your zoom controls. So before you would need to have it inside the menu bar, but now you could actually choose where you want to resize your windows and how big you want it specifically, which is extremely nice to see. This is why I liked in other browsers, but now I could finally scale it up however big or small that I wanted while knowing how big and small it is. Now, next changes has to do with the Messages app. So if I were to type a message right here, I can actually right click on it and I could make it bold, I can make it italicized, underlined, or even strike through, which you have to actually click on this button to make it strike through. And you also have text effects. So example, you can make your text get bigger. You can make your text get smaller. And you could do this on a per character basis. And along with that, you actually have some new reactions. So, so the current reactions, heart, thumbs up, thumbs down, ha ha, exclamation points, and question have all been redesigned here. And along with that, you can actually now use any emoji here inside the message app or any sticker that you have created before which is extremely nice to see you can use the mewing emoji to mew to a lot of stuff or just use emojis or any image to react with. And along with that, if you have an iPhone connected to iOS 18, you can use RCS messaging on your MacBook. Now the next change has to do with the Photos app. We got a couple of brand new things inside the Photos app. So the first thing here is that years, months, and all photos are the only options here. They actually move days here to a space called Collections. And search got even more powerful here inside the Photos app, which is extremely nice to see. Inside the Calendar app, they actually redesigned this. And, and along with that, all your reminders will actually be shown here inside of the Calendar app, which is extremely nice to see. Now, the next change has to do with the Notes app. So, so if I were to highlight this piece of text right here and click on this button, you can now actually highlight stuff inside the Notes app. So this is what it looks like before. This is what it looks like now. This is not to be confused with the ability to change the text color to whatever you want. You can now just highlight things easily. So let me just revert it before. Oh, okay, no, I don't want that. I just want it all reverted, please. All right, there we go. Inside of Freeform, if I were to make a couple of shapes here, I can actually now connect them pretty easily. So if I wanted to connect it to this, it's now a lot easier to connect stuff before you had to manually create a line. But now it's a lot easier to connect stuff with ease 
You could actually curve it as well, just like you can with the normal line. So it basically just creates a line, but it's just a lot easier to do stuff with. It can actually create some scenes here. So if I want some scenes, for example, scene one and scene two, I could actually now make multiple scenes. If I was watching a TV show inside the TV app with TV+, Plus, I would now be able to see the actors as I am watching, which is an optional feature, of course, but it is there if you want to, that. The music app's got a couple of changes. So now, if you were to highlight on a music, it now has a fading effect if you were to quickly do it. Extremely nice to see. And also the play and the shuffle buttons are now more rounded. And the browse tab has now been renamed to the new tab. You only need the required storage space to make updates. So for example, if I want to update Willy Widgets right here, I no longer need 160 megabytes. All I would need is 80 megabytes just to update the app. System settings got reorganized a little bit right here. So first of all, general is the main page now inside of system settings. It's no longer appearance, which I thought was kind of weird. It is now general, and they just reorganized it a little bit, along with adding device management back to the general tab. Now I would say this isn't as bad as the redoing system preferences and turning into system settings. It's just that it's a little bit more organized. I would say it's actually better than it was before but it would definitely take some time to get used to. Now, the next change is that we got an overhauled calculator app, so it looks much different now. It looks more like the one on iOS. It is exactly what you would expect it to be, and to get to a different view, you would click on this button now to get to the scientific view. And we also have a brand new view inside the calculator called Programmer, which I am not sure how to use this at all. And we also have Math Notes, which is a really interesting feature. It just basically opens up the Notes app to so this is basically just the notes app, just with a button inside the calculator app. If I want to do 5 plus 2 is equal to, it will immediately tell me just like that, that's a 7. And you can do some pretty cool things with, with math notes. We now have a dedicated app for passwords. So if I were to unlock this right here, I could actually see all my Wi-Fi passwords directly in the app. Along with security codes, it's now a lot easier to set up security codes. Best of all, it will also synchronize to your iPhone, so it's really nice to see that. We have a few brand new wallpapers here in, and screensavers inside of macOS Sequoia. So first of all, we have the Sequoia wallpaper, the Macintosh wallpaper, which is an extremely cool one to see. It basically just highlights the classic Mac days. We have Sequoia Sunrise, which is the new default wallpaper. It should set itself upon updating. We also have Sequoia Morning, Sequoia Night wallpapers. We have a brand new design here inside the Chess app, so it's now using metal APIs to render everything. And also when clicking on a chess piece, and now actually shows you a lot better before I had like a faint light. But now it's actually a lot more prominent of what piece are actually moving. Now I don't know how to play chess here as you can see right here. I'm pretty sure it's the bad move. But it is the same exact chess app. It's just a lot different. You can now set a message later inside this redesign picker. So if I were to click on this send messages later. All you have to do is just choose the time and the date that you would like to send the message and then press enter. We have a brand new trips category inside of the photos app. The home app inside of Mac West Sequoia has been updated right here. So first of all, it's now Catalyst optimized for Mac, which means it looks a lot better on a Mac. And you can also share certain accessories with guests inside of your home. The print center icon has been completely updated. You can now set backgrounds inside of video conferencing apps. So for example, if I want to be at Apple Park, I can easily be inside of Apple Park. Or you can import our own images from photos or just choose one from Finder. We have some brand new widgets including electricity usage and electricity rates. We have some brand new accessibility features inside of accessibility settings including vocal shortcuts. You can now block quote a couple of things inside of the notes app. And if you make the block quote a title, you could actually collapse stuff now. You could view transcriptions inside of voice memos. And you could also do it within the notes app. And yeah, that is everything that we have had inside of macOS Sequoia. I bet there are a lot more features that we have not seen yet. Let me know down in the comments down below if you found a couple of features that I have not mentioned. And thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, share this with your friends. Down my apps in the, in the description down below. They're all Sequoia ready, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!